week. I hope super like every week. Anyway, we ended last week. I don't know if you remember, but we ended last week with Joshua, the end of Joshua. Joshua was getting ready to die. He, he was old and he was giving his last words to wisdom or his sermon to the Israelites and he was telling them what to do. He divided the promised land up into the different tribes so they could go out and settle in their land. But the thing that he told them, I remember we said last week, is that we will choose to serve the Lord. Joshua chose his household, chose to serve the Lord. And he said you had to be obedient to God. And he was telling the Israelites, and you had to choose to serve God. And if not, then God would not be happy because you're, they were not choosing to serve God or worshiping God or be obedient to God and that there would be consequences. And so they were to remember that. So we start in Judges, and Judges is in the Old Testament. It's right after Joshua. And the story continues with the end, that Joshua has now passed away, and the next generation of Israelites are now flourishing in the land that God had given them. But one thing that they didn't learn or didn't remember from the next generation is they didn't choose to serve God and that they did wrong. And so it starts out in Judges 3, 7. It says, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served Baal and the Asherahs. And the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. And so they're choosing to, to serve these fake gods, these poles and child sacrifices and terrible things instead of remembering and focusing on the true God that gave them the promised land. So God had warned them that his anger would burn against them. And now they have forgotten that message that Joshua gave them. And the anger is burning with the Lord. And so he sold them into the hands of um, their neighbors, the Kushanites, and they were basically slaves to them, subject to them for eight years. And so they came out of Egypt being slaves. God gave them the promised land, and now they've forgotten all the promises that God has given them. And even though it might be tough times, it's still, we still have to be obedient to God. And so they were subject to these people that were not Israelites to eight years. But then they cried out to the Lord, it says. And so the Lord God raised up them a deliverer. So this is judges. So judges were people that had the Holy Spirit upon them, that were obedient to God, followed God, and gave people direction to follow God's will. Usually they were warriors and they helped settle disputes. And so they were called judges. And so they cried out to God. So God is merciful to them. Even though the anger burned against them, they're choosing to be a disobedient. Now they're in the hands of, you know, people that are not treating them well. And they cry out to God and God hears them and is merciful. And so while God is a judging God, God is also a merciful God. And when we cry out to him, he hears our cries. So he raised up a deliverer, Athenio, and he's Caleb's younger brother who saved them. The spirit of the Lord came upon them so that when he became Israel's judge and went to war, the Lord gave them into the hands of Othenio, who overpowered them. So now Othenio, who has the Holy Spirit on him, he went to war and the Lord God helped him overcome so Israel could be free. So the land had peace for 40 years. So now there's peace. They're settling in, they're uh, being obedient to God. But then Othenio dies, okay? And now we go on to the next verse of 12. And it said, once again, 
did again the israelites did evil in the eyes of the lord and because they did this evil the lord gave eglon king of moab power over israel so again they didn't remember what they were supposed to do to be obedient to serve the lord to worship him only and so the next generation again repeats the same mistakes as the the previous generations okay and so Eglon came and attacked Israel and they took possession of the city of palms the Israelites were subject <coughs> to Eglon excuse me king of Moab for 18 years so again they're having repercussions to their actions they were not obedient and now for 18 years they're subject to this king so again the israelites cried out to the lord and he gave them a deliverer so again god again is merciful so no matter how many times we keep repeating the same mistakes we cry out to god we say god i did not learn help us to learn we need your help God is merciful, and he comes and gives them a deliverer. Ehud, a left-handed man. The Israelites sent him with a tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. So now he's going to the king of Moab who has taken over the Israelites, and the Israelites are subject to this king. And so he presented them with a double-edged sword and a present and trying to act like he is being nice to this king but one thing to remember with Ehud is he's left-handed okay so this is important in this part of the Bible is because when you're left-handed so if you have a dagger or whatever and you're left-handed you're going to carry it on your right leg or your right thigh or wherever it is that they're carrying it and because it's easier for you to grab with your left hand, okay? So most people were right-handed. So if they would have come into the king's presence, people would have searched him, and they would have searched his left leg and his left side of his body because wherever he, if he was right-handed, he would carry it on the left side of his body. So it was very important to note that God raised to a specific person that was left-handed for God's purpose. <clears throat> so the king said, so he presented the tribute to Eglon, and after Ehud had presented the tribute, he sent them on their way. And so now he's going back to the king. He says, Ehud then approached him, this is the king, while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his summer palace. So now Ehud's going into the king, okay, to his summer palace. And he said, I have a message from God, okay, for you. And as the kings rose from a seat, Ehud reached with his left hand and drew the sword. Now, this isn't really a big sword. It's just more of a dagger, so let's just say but drew the sword from his right thigh and he plunged it into the king, killing the king and releasing the Israelites. And so he got away. After he'd gone, he locked the door and went out and he could get away before his servants realized him. So again, you realize that God's taking care of the Israelites. It's through war, which sometimes is a very violent thing, but God is now having mercy on the Israelites. So he said, follow me, this is Ehab, for the Lord has given Moab, your enemy, into your hands. So they followed him down and taking possession of the fords of the Jordan that led to Moab, they allowed no one to cross over. That day, Moab was made subject to Israel, and the land had peace for 80 years. So again, God raises another judge, puts the Holy Spirit upon him. And when the Israelites repent and cry out to God, God releases them. But after he had the Israelites back into it, 
And so came another judge called Shamgar. And Shamgar struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad. He too saved Israel. What's an ox goad? Well, I looked it up. And so this really doesn't look like it. But if it was this and it had like a long hook on it, like a metal hook, and they used to drive oxen. You know, they would go to the fields and they would drive oxen through it. And so he, this Shamgar, struck down 600 Philistines with this ox goat, okay? And he saved Israel. Then comes another judge. This is a prophetess, actually. After Ehud died, the Israelites once again did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin. <sighs> they still didn't learn their lessons, and sometimes we're the same way. We just keep repeating the same mistakes, and we keep having consequences to our action. This was 20 years they cried, and after 20 years they cried to the Lord for help. Deborah, a prophetess, was leading Israel at that time, and she held court under the palm of Deborah. So, anyway, she held court. She used to settle disputes. She was a very wise woman, and she had the Holy Spirit upon her. She sent for Barak. And she said to him, the Lord of God commands you, go take with you 10,000 men and lead them to Mount Tabor. I will Lord Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon Valley and give him into your hands. So she's telling Barak, oh, listen, God is going to give you this, uh, this Jabin, this bad guy, and he's, he's going to give him over to you. But Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go with you. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. But that wasn't really what God was saying. God was saying go. He wasn't saying necessarily that he had to take Deborah. He was just saying go. But Deborah says very well, I will go. But because of the way you're going about this, the honor will not be yours. So the honor of killing Jabin would not be hers. They went and they conquered, and all the troops of Sisera fell by the sword, and not a man was left. Sisera, however, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Hebra, the Canaanite. And so he went fleeing to this person, this, this lady, thinking that he was going to get relief. But God moved her, and so he fell asleep. And she gave him things to drink and gave him milk. But when he went to sleep and went in deep sleep, this um, lady picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground and he died. And so now Israelites, Israel is free again. He's, she said, come, this is Barak now's coming, and she says, come, I will show you the man you are looking for. On that day, God subdued Jabin, the king, Canaanite king, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites grew stronger and stronger against Jabin, the king, Canaanite king, until they destroyed him. And so then Deborah and Barak just go and praise the Lord. They sing praises to the Lord, their God, for helping them get them through this. So one of the things I want you to remember is that we can do the same mistakes sometimes over and over again, but God is a merciful God. And now we're not of the Old Testament, but this applies to us as a New Testament in that God gives us a deliverer and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we have Jesus into our hearts, God just gives us the strength through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit to give us mercy. Now we have to choose, it has to be a conscious effort and that has to be a daily conscious effort some days 
to continue to serve the Lord. We cannot forget God gets us through a tough time and things become easy. Sometimes it's easy for us to back off and not give God the praise and the glory and not read our Bibles and not pray to him because things are going pretty good and we're thinking, ah, I got this under control. And then when things are bad again, we're like, oh, okay, God, I'm crying out to you. But God wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be diligent, vigilant on good times and bad times to pursue him, pursue God, pursue him by reading his word, praising God, singing praises to him, worshiping him. He wants us to be have him involved in all aspects of our life. He wants us to maintain our love for him in good times and in bad times, even the whole way through. And so he wants us to be dependent on him. Sometimes we're slow to learn and we can repeat history, but God gives us the strength to be able to be different, to be able to choose to serve the Lord. So I just want you to remember that and remember that God is merciful. He's ready. He just wants us to cry out to him and say, Lord God, I have sinned against you again, but I need your mercy and your grace. Please be gracious to me. Forgive me for my sins and help me to move forward and help me to be obedient and love and worship you. So I hope that story, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this Old Testament stories. And even though they're in the Old Testament, there's still a lot of applications today that we can learn, that we can just apply that to our life today. So I hope you guys have a great week. It's coming into November. I can't even believe it's November already. Well, not quite, but at the end of this week, it'll be November. Hard to believe. We just we started this, it was summer, and now we're already into November. The sun, snow will start flying here soon, at least in Pennsylvania. So wherever you are, I hope you have a great week. I hope you're blessed, and I hope you continue to serve the Lord. Thank you, Kids Corner. Have a great day.